Hello everyone and welcome back to Neuroscience Methods 101. Today we will be talking about implanted and transcutaneous vagus nerve stimulation. The vagus nerve is a cranial nerve that sends all kinds of sensory and motor information from the body to the brain and vice versa. As a crucial part of the parasympathetic nervous system, the vagus nerve is involved in controlling heart rate, breathing, cardiovascular activity, digestion and much more. As such, the vagus nerve is important for the communication between bodily organs and the brain. Unsurprisingly, improper functioning of the vagus nerve can cause all kinds of issues, from irregular heart rate to digestive issues. But dysfunctioning of the vagus nerve has also been related to psychiatric disorders such as depression. By externally stimulating the vagus nerve with low intensity currents, this dysfunction could possibly be repaired. There are two kinds of vagus nerve stimulation. One is invasive and the other is non-invasive. The invasive method, which is simply known as vagus nerve stimulation or abbreviated as VNS, has been around for several decades. VNS has received FDA approval for the treatment of depression and epilepsy in 2005. For this procedure, a stimulation device is implanted in the chest and the stimulation electrodes are connected directly to the vagus nerve typically on the left side of the body. Now, the right vagus nerve is normally not used because it's more likely to carry fibers that supply nerves to the heart. So it's a little bit more complicated to implant. But which parameters are used for vagus nerve stimulation? Short direct current pulses are applied, often between a quarter and half a millisecond. The frequency of these pulses differs per condition and per person. For depression, on average a frequency of 20 pulses per second and for epilepsy, on average a frequency of 30 pulses per second is used and the stimulation is applied for several seconds followed by several minutes of no stimulation. However, several research studies have looked into how to optimize these parameters to improve efficacy and reduce side effects. Such potential side effects may include a change in voice, coughing, throat pain, shortness of breath and headaches. More recently, a non-invasive way to stimulate the vagus nerve has been introduced and it's known as transcutaneous VNS, which is abbreviated as TVNS. Obviously, when using a non-invasive approach, electrodes cannot directly be connected to the vagus nerve. Now, some TVNS devices apply stimulation directly to the neck. This is known as transcutaneous cervical VNS, or TCVNS. But most other devices apply stimulation to the ear, which is known as transcutaneous auricular VNS or TAVNS. In this case, the goal is to stimulate the auricular branch of the vagus nerve, which is a cluster of nerves in the ear that directly connects to the vagus nerve. For TVNS, similar stimulation frequencies and pulse durations are used as in the invasive counterpart. Stimulation intensities vary, but it is limited given that higher intensities can cause some uncomfortable sensations. Because of the low cost and ease of use, a wide range of TVNS parameters has been explored. Also, it has been tried on a variety of psychiatric and neurological disorders, or even to improve cognition in healthy individuals. This wide range of scientific exploration, and given that TVNS is still in its infancy, it is hard to find a clear indication of what the optimal parameters are. When going through the scientific literature, there are several null findings. Again, this can be explained by the wide variety of parameters. And obviously, some of those parameters will not work. And of course, it is very important to figure out what works and also what doesn't work. So this non-invasive approach of stimulating the vagus nerve is very promising, but it is still in its early days and requires more systematic research. Now, that's it. We hope you enjoyed the explanation about vagus nerve stimulation. If you did, consider giving this video a like. And as always, we hope to see you the next time.